The upstairs is way too loud. Let me turn that down. Sorry. Okay. Well, we just are now live. Stop it. <laughs> oh, that works. Yay, who we're alive. <laughs> Let me see. I say I can open up Twitch. Yeah, you can even put Twitch on your computer. Look at us. We've got like we're now we're dual screening because Ooh, we're sitting dual, together. Dual screening, being able to like reply to the stuff quickly and all that. Meanwhile, I'm, I'm, I'm I'm over here with my uh, three monitor set up. One, two of my monitors connected one of my computers, and the other monitor connected to my other laptop. <laughs> I nice. have the the list of questions on my phone, but like I was like, how am I going to jump between all of the things? I mean, if you wanted to try and send them to me, I could try and like post them on the stream somehow. Is it good? I yeah, there are a bunch of I I would have then tried to tag like put people's usernames then next time. Then. Next time. There's Mandy. <laughs> it's not worth it. We'll be fine. <laughs> Where'd this dog? Dun, 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 dun. Don't worry, our dog just snuck into a child's room. It's fine. Uh oh. <laughs> C'est la vie. Pause trouble. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. Oh, okay. Hello. I like that Janine and Rob kind of match right now with the the D and D paraphernalia. Yeah, I like. I love asking me about my D and D character. <laughs> my coworkers got me this shirt. It's so. That's cool. great. I need one. <laughs> it's great. Ask me about my D and D character. Which one? Yeah. <laughs> William. William is here. Oh, hey, word. Sammy! Look at you, first time chatter. We are here to reveal D and D secrets. And by secrets, we mean just rant about our characters mostly. <laughs> also, explain how you create D and D characters, which is why a lot of people that will be here. <laughs> which I, which is going to be fun. I, I did try to like I, I reorganized the questions on the uh, Google Doc because those are fun questions to answer. And I think everyone kind of creates D&D &D characters a little bit differently. I know like that's a constant debate between the two of us is um, how to build a character. How to build a character. I may or may not have just went and created five new characters just <laughs> randomly recently. Only five? Yeah. <laughs> you, don't, you don't want to know. You just don't. You, yeah. Well, see, I still have the free account of D and D Beyond, so I'm limited to six. So I've got a keyer and oh. the random assortment of things I decide to create and destroy. Nice. There's that fancy way to archive them. That's a good one. Um, you can. I'm not familiar with that. I've only been able to find it a couple of times, and it might be because I have all. Uh, it might, yeah, it might be because both of us have shelled out for one, subscriptions. One thing that makes me very sad as I go through and try and make some of these new characters is they're not part of the campaign we're doing. So I don't have a lot of the fancy stuff available that Akir has access to. Okay, so for that, you, instead of create new character, go to my campaigns, go into my campaign and create it there. And you can just Leave it there. I have <laughs> no qualms with this. It I also will means do this. So I'm going to be recreating five new characters over the next couple of days. <laughs> I 100% support this. I might do that as well because that sounds fun. <laughs> I, my heart only has room for one right now. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I don't I... delve deep into like the backstory. I just like the cool things I imagine they could do to the bad guys. That's where I start with character creation. Yep. How could I possibly obliterate the baddie? Mm hmm And then I go from there. No. I just ways I could obliterate them. 
I go, um, so what's some trauma that I have in my life and how can I um, create a character to help me cope with this? And then I create a character based off of that. I, that, that that's, a, that's very reductionistic. I, 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 I go, what would be a cool story? And then I, I uh, put in my trauma, but. <laughs> Your trauma just exudes, just sleep gets through the cracks. You don't know how it happens. It's like a different thing. Like everyone struggles with like something slightly different. And it's just like, I'm just working through some of my issues and <laughs> it's fine. We'll just, we'll just let it lie. <laughs> one of my, one of my characters like works with, works through never feeling like accepted and stuff. And like, then she gets to have this beautiful found family. And I'm actually really sad because her campaign is coming to a close, but I'm like, I've done everything I could with this character. So I'm really excited. But except like, die. Except, except die. Except, except kill me. Like to die. <laughs> okay. dying is not alone. Not I'm all there. that die stay dead. Hmm. <laughs> I'm the once again, though, I'm the cleric, so I'm the one that could bring me back. We would have had a lot more flexibility in who's allowed to die if I had been able to find that tattoo, but that didn't quite work out. Hey, there's still time. There is still time. <laughs> plus, plus, I'm not sure I could have afforded that tattoo anyway, so it <laughs> likely would not have mattered. No. <laughs> so, let's wind back to the characters the not the characters the questions that are kind of on the list because um i want to know and annalise curry from instagram also want to know how did y'all get into D D? so i'm sure we all have different stories about that Ooh, fun. you want me to go first i will let you go first yeah. okay so well, we go in we go in order of the people with the most to least experience with D D. Nice, I go last. <laughs> okay, um, we're gonna go 19, yeah, I'm old, 1997, maybe 1998. <laughs> um, I was in middle school, mm -hmm. and my buddy had this high school friend in the neighborhood, and he wanted us to come and play because we had done like, um, like online role playing for like Dragon Ball Z. And those other cool guy things that, you know, um, it was like Hotmail Chat and oh role-playing on there. Uh, so was, yes, this was back with dial-up. Like, oh, yeah, I, I know. You're, you're such a nerd. Um, I'll have everyone know that Stranger Things may or may not be a biographical story of Rob's life, but <laughs> we can't say that it is or is not true. I probably weren't talking about this. Yeah, no. Okay. <laughs> You know how in Stranger Things there's one dice? Yeah, he's back from that day when the DM alone had the die. Yep. So. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, we went over to the high school guy's house and we played D&D &D and it was awesome. <laughs> and I then told my mother about it, who um, is very Southern Baptist and very <laughs> much was like, and no. Um, so that lasted for probably about a year, and then I started buying my own books and dice when 3.5 came out, <laughs> and by the end of high school, I had played probably three or four different campaigns and run a ton of them, um, and I owned so many books, and I was that nerd that would read every page of the player's handbook and all of that. So, yeah, played into college, then took a adulting hiatus for about a decade, and, <laughs> and then married a nerd. <laughs> Satanic panic. Yeah, uh, definitely. <laughs> this edition for since like 2018, 2017, something like that, and I have over 50 characters in fifth edition alone that I have created, and I've played about 20 of them. Uh, yeah. yeah. And I've DM'd, I don't even know how many hours. Do you prefer DMing or playing? 
Um, that's a tough one. That wasn't one of the questions. Yeah. It's just so I want to know. I love telling the story. Yeah. So if I can be in a group where we are collaboratively telling the story and I don't have to run all the mechanics of the DMing part of it, I love playing. Mm. But so often, if I really want the story to actually progress, I end up having to be the DM. So <laughs> it's fine. I don't mind. I just, as um, Peter... And that's on about, control issues. <laughs> just kidding. Look, I'm the DM. Every NPC has my trauma. So. <laughs> I need to open another thing. TikTok, you can watch the wall. <laughs> All right, there we go. Yeah. By the way, we may have been asked to beta test a new module. Oh. oh. Wow. Okay. That would be fun. We don't have to talk about it as a group, so I won't announce anything. But um, okay. if so, then Robert, you'd have to decide if you'd be comfortable being a player. A player. Always. Okay. Who's always gonna run it? And then we get to see the other side of Robert. <laughs> oh. yeah. But okay, continue. Yes. Who's second <laughs> oldest here? That would probably be me. Well, well it's second longest experience, 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 experience with DD. Experience range. Ah. How long have you been playing, Amelia? Uh four. Five, four, five, four or five years. But I'm. <laughs> by the way, I'm live on TikTok as well. And uh, Princess Nova and Crafty Moonlight, you should go to Twitch because the stream quality is better. <laughs> I mean, we love you anyway, but I'm just letting you know. <laughs> Everyone join Twitch. How long have you been playing, Peter? Uh, actual years of playing, not that many. But I started when I was very little. So, like, probably 13 years ago is when I first started. <laughs> so I, don't know if, I don't know who should go first, me or Lisa, but... Oh, go for it, Peter. Oh, Peter. All right, so uh, my journey with D&D &D started when I was probably, like, 13 or 14. I don't remember for sure. Um, but it started because my dad was obsessed with D&D. &D. Um, he had all of all of the books um, and some multiple copies of books too. When they would have like revisions and release updates, he'd buy them too. Um, so like Rob, I also spent a lot of my teenage years um, just reading the handbooks. But that was 3.5 edition. Um, so me and my brothers and my dad, he would typically DM and we would just like spend entire Saturdays just playing D&D. &D. Um, so that was, that was a blast, but after high school, took a break until a few years ago, a few coworkers of mine, we ended up playing a Pathfinder campaign that went pretty well and then COVID. Um, so this is actually my first, this is my first official 5e campaign, um, ever technically because the large majority of my experience was in high school with 3.5. After that, it was mostly Pathfinder. Granted, Pathfinder is based on 5e rules, so it's kind of somewhat counts a little. It's a lot of math. I mean, it's not that hard, especially with D&D Beyond. Yeah. But Pathfinder is not on D&D Beyond. That's... I mean, there are things you can do to just kind of make it work. I have opinions that I will keep to myself for <laughs> I have I have no attachment to Pathfinder, so nothing you say will offend me. No, no, not you. I'm worried about offending the other people. I'm worried about the other nerds in the world. I'm worried about offending. <laughs> That's fair. But that is my my D and D journey. Was there anything else I was supposed to add to that? Just your, your experience. That was good. <laughs> um, I will say that. I think at least 50 to 60% of the time that I play D&D, &D, it has always, it has usually been a ranger of some form or another. Mm -hmm. So ranger is, is by far my go-to. And the main reason is that is obviously Aragorn from Lord of the Rings. Solid, of course. Solid choice. Solid. 
I appreciate it very much. <laughs> yes, Pika's so offended with her zero D and D knowledge. <laughs> You're up. Um, let's see here. I've been probably playing off and on the last 10 years, and my experience started when my brother's husband had been like a DM for like 30 plus years. He had one campaign that lasted, I think it was like for 30 years. Like the same core group of players that he had friends with in high school. And then they had like an additional group that they did um, like on Saturdays. So for Saturdays, they would do like a giant <laughs> crock pot of like chili or something awesome. And then they would do different like staggering of meals and snacks. And it was like an all day D and D binge. So everyone would show up and create a character and then it was just like good food and D and D game like all day. And when I'm talking about all day, I'm, I'm talking like starting time at eight a.m. and ending sometime around like three a.m. And you know, people would be like sleeping <laughs> on the table. <laughs> There's like an aroma in the air of like chili and things. <laughs> ah, the smell of nerd. <laughs> I know, the smell of nerd. And there was, yeah, there was alcohol. <laughs> so it was fun. It was so much fun. So, um, and he was a major collector. So we're talking like the nerd kingdom. He nice. had he had the whole like um, barrister bookshelves with all the vintage, like every D and D module. He had cases upon cases of minis, like painted, you know, painted minis, painted um, like set pieces to actually play on, um, hand hand done maps. I mean, like we're talking. So many different files of actual like paper, you know, character sheets, <gasps> etc. Mandy, excuse you. Rude. Come here. I'm talking. Uh, hold on. There's. T it's. It, we gotta pause for a dog bark. <laughs> oh man. We got a request on TikTok for everyone to roll for initiative. Hey <laughs> <laughs> guys. Okay, it's okay. A cure cannot be surprised, so there's no surprise attack here. <laughs> But anyways, so that was like my first experience like starting doing it like all like that and I really enjoy playing clerics <laughs> just because I like some of like the perks with that. I always enjoy playing like an elf. I love the whole trance kind of thing. Um so I I have played a tiefling, um is my first rogue so that's the first time I've ever played a rogue and I feel like I'm doing okay at it I'm learning some of the mechanics of it where it's not like you're as much the tank um you have to be a little bit more hands-off because you're a little bit more delicate but yeah first into combat and get surrounded quickly yeah, I've already di almost died a couple times. It's oh. like me learning how a rogue works. Going, oh yeah, yeah I can't oh yeah, no, this might fray. not be the best idea. <laughs> no, I've enjoyed it. It's, it's a lot of fun. But... Awesome. Yeah, I love how mysterious Tara is. <laughs> <laughs> the rogue is a mystery to us all. Intentionally, even like better. unintentionally, just by like much is added in the rps and stuff yeah. it's like huh is terry here oh hey <laughs> <laughs> stealthing all the time hi hey, so i've only been know. go to twitch <laughs> <laughs> i've only been playing D, D for like four or five years but my friends growing up um down the street from us their parent their parents played D, &D and um i just remember that well, one, they'd 
told my parents this at a barbecue one time. And um, my parents did not really do fantasy other than Narnia. Um, they let me read Lord of the Rings when I was nine and then realized that this had been the biggest mistake of their lives because it became my entire personality. So, you know, I was on my way to a semi-normal childhood and then 20 years ago got my hands on Tolkien and it's been like this ever since. And he's like, she was already a horse girl. We made it worse. So, <laughs> so these friends, these friends, um, the parents invited my parents to play D&D &D and they're like, that's satanic. Absolutely not. Um, but we were like still allowed to play with the kids. We just were told like you are, if they try to ask you to play Dungeons and Dragons, you absolutely may not play with that, that with them and you must come home immediately. So, um, so I would, I would like to know who started the religious campaign against Dungeons and Dragons so that I can ask them, do you regret this or are you just, I actually, I actually know this because I love conspiracy theories and true crime, but, <laughs> but we, that's a whole other tale. <laughs> but so like we would play like role play games basically with these kids where we were um, kind of LARPing. We would make our own weapons and we would have rules for how you hit and stuff and make up these epic stories. I just didn't realize what we were playing, you know? <laughs> So then, you know, we, I was in a college writing class and we were talking about character development and the teacher had decided that um, to really understand how to write a character, the best way to do that is to create a D&D &D character. And she didn't know how to play D&D, &D, but her husband played D&D. &D. So yeah, it was really funny. And so she broke the group into, you know, the class into groups and we got to write characters. So I got to write a backstory and I've always loved writing. I love, I love characters. I love role play. So I wrote her like a five page backstory about this character that I had given a beautiful elvish name, but just became known as George McTeegan. Um, because the dice were super duper not into my favor like and i just kept rolling really bad and so everyone in my little four person group just were like she needs the worst name ever dorts mcteegan became her name and after this i was just like this is this is really fun i wish i knew people who would like actually play D, &D with me but i didn't so instead i started listening to podcasts and i listened to critical role and the adventure zone frequently and that's actually when you realized I was a nerd because we both made an adventure zone um reference, reference and kind of like looked at each other because we met at a church event and you know you don't talk about the fact that you're into D, D at church events except that now we have a group of people from our <laughs> church that play D, D with us on Sundays it's great so we just kind of like looked at each other like did you did you intend to make that reference do, do you D and D? And I happened to have my mini <laughs> of George McTeegan in my car, and I was like, "Yeah, I mean, I've got my minis in my car." And he's just like, "I have dice in my car." Like, okay, we're gonna be friends now. <laughs> Yours. <laughs> my church, my church, our youth group talked about D and D all the time, but that's because our pastor, our youth pastor at the time was like a huge nerd like he he has boxes and boxes filling his attic of comic books he goes to That's comic con every year and talks about it from the pulpit so like D&D &D growing up was never taboo like yeah. in that setting but outside of it like I didn't I, I I just assumed it would be like taboo because I'd grown up with it being taboo and then I met him and he's like more of an extrovert than I am. And all of a sudden we started dating and he like started talking to all of my friends and realized apparently they all liked D and D too. So um, yeah, it was just, like, Oh, Hey, now we have a whole collection of nerds at church. Let's play. <laughs> and we did. <laughs> yeah, we were 
nerd one of our nerd church friends is on here and he had he did have a very specific question for you robert oh, and yeah. it's one of his <clears throat> normal <clears throat> questions if you were a leprechaun but your favorite color was tuesday how many plates do you think you could balance on your nose Seven. steven <laughs> 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 it's a valid question. It's really important to ask. I thought the answer was pizza. No, it has to be seven. Are you sure? Because I thought it was 42. 42. That's the answer to life. <laughs> That's the answer to life and everything there is. <laughs> Which he just saw for the first time yeah. the other day. It was just how I got to expose him to Hitchhiker's this guy to the galaxy for the first time. Um... The cool Steve's wife Val has had a question that she had sent in. What was your favorite part? What is your favorite part of being a DM? Did I we never answered my part. No, of you never answered. I'm so sorry. I just messed it up. It's a short answer. Over the, the newest <laughs> person. The short answer is still an answer. Sorry, <laughs> <Hi>, babe. <laughs> Jeez. So we bullied Janine into this. Yeah. I'm literally <laughs> married to you in the game and you skipped my answer. <laughs> I don't think it counts as an official marriage. Like, there are no witnesses or anything. Just God and they hit it from God. Was watching. Not <laughs> even God. Not <laughs> even God. You can't even say. Yeah, you can't even say because your God doesn't approve. Uh, I met these strangers on the internet and I have no sense of stranger danger fear, so. <laughs> They're like, hey, do you want to play D&D? And I was just like, I only know the one episode of Community and Stranger Things. And they're like, that's okay. Um, but I did grow up with a vivid imagination and playing dress up and all that. So I guess that's close enough. <laughs> I love that the, uh, the video stream is delayed so I get to watch you choke again on your watch. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> it helps that you're married to me. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yes, I am. A Peter uh, would stay like after work and play Pathfinder with his coworkers, and I would be like, Are you done yet? Or should I just go? <laughs> <laughs> so I've come a long way since uh, Path Pathfinder wife to Albert. True. I feel like if, if that happened in the future, you, like, if this had happened before that, you would have joined the campaign then. Yeah, I would have, probably. <laughs> and then you would have learned about Pathfinder. I would have learned about Pathfinder. That's... Too much math! Well, not <laughs> Too much math! Look, if you can be fifth level and have an armor class in the 40s, <laughs> what's wrong with this? Don't like math! <laughs> <laughs> I'm too dyslexic <laughs> for this. I grew up. I grew up on three point five, so like, math is not an issue. Oh, like, I can't by me. I mean, this is like all we had was dice. I was born in the dice. <laughs> Speaking of, we that is uh, the one plushie that I've gotten. Our soon-to-be child mm -hmm. is a D twenty. You did? Oh, I didn't know that. Have you rolled it yet? No, I just kept it in the plastic. Wait, it's here. Okay, Been here for a month. <laughs> you have to you have to wait to roll it until it's birth, and then once once it's birth, then you roll it, and the outcome will be the result of its life. What? <laughs> baby has to roll this. So what we're gonna do is you're gonna just give baby with all of her not fine motor skills at all, the plushie, wait for it to fall off of her. And then it's rolled because right. it's her dice. So she gets to have the inaugural roll. You've already rolled it, haven't you? No, I just, you're, you're not a DM. You take the die and you throw it at the baby and it bounces off. That's... It bounces off her head. Wait, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. You're going to throw something at the baby. It's soft. It's All right. not. Back and the baby's soft. The question, yeah. since we have a few of them, we want to get through them. Yeah. What's our next question? What's your favorite part of being the DM? Apparently throwing dice at people. That's baby. his favorite. No, dice at Not babies. people, babies, <laughs> specifically. Dice at babies. <laughs> Not even babies. Newborn infant. Day of is best. Day of is best. <laughs> as, as soon as you see her head, you just a peg it. Yeah. She's barely out of there. Wham! Yeah. I'm back in. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, I think I would have to say the best part of DMing is getting the reaction out of my players that <laughs> I'm hoping, whether it's joy, glee, fear, panic. I don't actually care what emotion it is, as long as it's real and just right, right there. So, um, yeah, being able to set up a situation that the character, the players are so invested in that I get hate messages from people or love messages from other people. It, it's good. <laughs> I, I really enjoy that. I don't know if Sarah's currently watching, but she's messaging me that she's going to come troll us because I'm not getting back to her about the game we're playing right now. <laughs> I know that you mostly get um, you better not messages from Janine. Yeah, you um, get threats from me. Mm -hmm. It's a good thing we live in different states. <laughs> I know where you live, though. I know. <laughs> God, she's coming. What's next? What's next? I really All am. Right. So you better uh, prepare yourselves. <laughs> <laughs> also from Val, and then this kind of goes with, we've got other people asking very similar questions. So I'm going to read a bunch of them together. Um, where do we get character inspirations for everyone? Um, what's the process when designing a character? Um, is there like complete control over that? Uh, and then we also have a third question in, in there that kind of all goes together. Who's who from from Bruno, whom, who did you create? Oh, sorry, how did, I'm so dyslexic right now, guys. How did you create your character? Is there an online generator or is it your creation? So it's all really about like character creation really? and um, how we do all of the characterness. Should I, should I throw D&D Beyond on the stream real quick just to show people the, the main tool that we all used? Sure, not a sponsor, but could be one day. Yeah. Not sponsored. not sponsored, but very fun. Pay them monthly. We, so yeah. Fact, we, and Beyond is actually, for those who have watched our stream, um, we've got the little window that shows the dice rolling. That is the program that I'm going to pull up here. First Shade, I think the question in the chat is for you. So I'll talk a little bit about the NPCs. Um, so depending on what I'm running, if it's authentic, like my own creation NPC, or if it's something from the book. From the book is pretty easy. They give you, you know, a standard description and kind of the goals and personality of the NPC. When I'm coming up with the NPC that I'm creating, uh, you know, it goes back to just middle school narrative is this going to be a static character or is it going to be a dynamic character and typically with an npc it is. going to be a static character so i will lock on to a single little um personality trait or an emotion or some sort of flaw and that is what npc is supposed to embody so that's really where i go with my npc creation and so here is D and D Beyond. Um, there's a lot you can do, but it is basically a character builder. Um, so this is what we all use to make these characters. Um, uh, the character I'm on right now does not have all of the cool features that we have access to because Rob is awesome and shared a bunch of stuff with us. But mm -hmm. uh, this is kind of the base stuff that you would see if you just have a free account because it is free. So any of you could go on and just start putting characters and having fun with it. Um, but there's all of these base. Uh, races, so um, lots of different options in here. Um, Eric Roker is what I've been playing. Uh, there's things like Dragonborns, different kinds of dwarves, elves, uh, Genasi, gnomes, goliaths, half elf, half orcs, halflings, humans, different kinds of humans. Oh, variants. Forgot about variants. Uh, tieflings <laughs> and ASMRs. So once you go in and pick a race you want to play, at that point, there's some things you can do. Um, so, like some of them, they'll get extra spells or that kind of thing. And when you're picking these things, they'll give you all the details about it, so you could see that stuff as well. And then after that is when you pick your class. So these are all of the classes available. Um, so 
So for instance, uh, Atreus is a cleric, Athena is a fighter, Kira is a ranger and a cleric, and uh, Terra is a rogue. So you'd be able to pick these. They have different attributes and skills and options and um, all kinds of stuff in here. There's always more to read. That that is kind of the key to D&D <laughs> is there is always something else you could read about these things and add on. Um, plus, a lot of things you'll hear the term homebrew, um, which is basically things that players have made up, but made up well enough that they are now sort of official and playable. Um, so that adds a lot of different skills and options and um, ways that you can play the game. Through the game, you can level up, and as you level up, you get more options. So, like a ranger will get spells after a while. Um, other classes just start with spells, all that kind of stuff. Um, these are the abilities. So, there's a few different ways you can get abilities. You can either just enter them manually, you can roll the dice to get different sets. Um, there's also more standard ways, which I think this was the baseline for like 3.5 was. There's an array of options, and then as you pick them, they kind of go away. So you have good skills and you have less good skills. Um, but in the end, well, let me switch over to a character that I did not just break. <laughs> <laughs> I just destroyed that character. But it's OK, because I'm going to recreate all of these characters later. It's, it's fun just like building random characters. It is. Do you tend to create a character by making their stats first? Or like, do you think of like the character first and then stat them? Because this is the constant debate in my house of which is the correct way to do this. So for me, for me, I definitely oriented around stats. So sometimes I'll have an idea of what direction I'm going to go and I'll pick a race in a class. But then I'll go and roll the stats. And then based on the stats, I'll go back and tweak the, the class and race to better suit what I want it to be able to do to try and make it as powerful as possible. Because my goal when I'm creating a character is to just be a badass character. That's what I want. For me, as <laughs> a writer, I'm all about like backstory. So I normally actually start with the character itself. like who I imagine my character to be, the backstory, and then I might change a little bit based off of how I roll, like stats or by, yeah. you know, point by stats, etc. You put um, your cameras back on? But I always have kind of like an idea of who I want my character to be first. Writer. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I started my character building with just stress. <laughs> <laughs> you had no idea what she was doing. Think, are you putting our cameras back on the screen? Or did yeah, I? I just oh. put it back up. <laughs> I, yeah, I write my. There's like a 10 to 15 second delay. So. I write the idea for my characters first. Like, with. I kind of. It was just kind of funny. I remember even just building Atreus. A lot of my characters end up getting built when Robert and I are in the car and we are driving. And I'm like. So here's the story I was thinking for a character. I'm like, what if I had um, this and this happened? So I, I barely even do like races in class yet. Um, the only thing, I mean, I do, I, I have been pretty consistently a cleric since I discovered I could play cleric. And I do, and I, I acknowledge that when I say I, love playing a cleric and I'm going to play every cleric subclass. This is mostly just because I am too afraid to learn another class yet. Um <clears throat> I'm not I'm not a coward, I'll say it. I'm I'm afraid. <laughs> and um but I will probably play a paladin at some point. Um there <laughs> so I was like I was like ooh I kind of want to play a grave cleric because I haven't yet. So let me think, what would be a really good backstory? And I started thinking of just like, Lord knows the most edgy backstory I could possibly think of <laughs> for Atreus. And Robert was the one that was like, oh, what if you played a dampier? 
And I was like, is that a thing? Can I play that? Can I be freaking Edward Cullen? Are you kidding me? Can Robert trick you into this storyline? Yes. A hundred percent. No. Yeah. A hundred percent. So I was like, I was like, what if I'm like, you know, like a cleric, but not like necessarily a good guy. And what if I don't have a great relationship with my God? Like, what if it's like, and he's like, oh yeah, well you could have this guy. And so we're like, we were looking up gods and stuff and none of them really fit. And so I was just kind of like, yeah, you know, this, the, we, we, I forget who we had chosen, but there was like a totally different actual it was close to anubis but then we changed yeah. to something else it was anubis at first yeah. and then it was something else and then it was because we really wanted the idea of like death and justice um and so then we were like oh i was like can i just make up a god and he had this evil gleam in his eye oh, that i should not have trusted because then he goes absolutely and i was like yay and then, so I gave him like a whole bunch of like ideas for what this would look like. I wrote Atreus's like turning and being called by this God. And he just had this face the whole time that I knew I should not have trusted because, because now at this point, Eusidium is just more and more terrifying every moment. And I'm like, oh God, I'm trapped. I did some of this, you did the rest of this. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah and then i took one look at the character arc she chose and i said yep my character's gonna fall in love with your character you have no choice in the matter <laughs> that i did not expect like i a lot of times like things will happen in games and stuff that i'm like yep this is the character i've chosen this is what i've expected will happen and it really just goes like that but like I chose this dude bent on revenge. Um, and, <laughs> and I really did not see the whole, the, the Mina and Atreus relationship happening at all. And then it did. And I love it. <laughs> Cause I, I know that's like, people go back and forth. Like there are some people who hate inter-party relationships and inter-party romances. And I am not one of those people. I love relationships. I think relationships are what make us human, you know, not, not necessarily just romantic relationships, but like the way we interact with people. And so I love, love inter-party romance so much. So our, yeah. our party mm -hmm. has like all types of relationships right now. There's the romantic relationship. There's like the like paternal relationship with the Kier. He's like the uncle dad of the whole group <laughs> and then we have like tara and mina who like form this like sister relationship and then i don't know what kind of relationship is happening right now with the treus and tara but it's like a like a <laughs> i feel like treus and tara just like poke at each other yeah. all the time constantly like they're just gonna look for ways to get under each other's skin it's like <laughs> annoying siblings they might as well be twins <laughs> <laughs> so there's a I mean the way it all came together though like very very organically it was super cool yeah I will say this is probably the first time I've played D&D &D where relationships were a thing like even just like character relationships and development too because like anytime I've played in the past when I played with my dad and my brothers like it was just about the story like we were individual guys who were just like Fighting the bad guy in this world kind of stuff. And same yeah. thing with my coworkers. So like this is the first time where it's it's a lot more like it's bigger than that. Yeah. Lord Lord of the Rings spoiled me in that way. Cause like you look at like Frodo and Sam, you look at Mary and Eowyn, Mary and Pippin, you know, like they are natural. They are natural. People form them in intense situations. Yeah. Yeah. There's like one it's, line uh that between like Mina and Akir and they're talking that like just like resonates with me so much where he's just like well like what's going on between you and Atreus and she's just like that house intensified and sped up a lot it's like yeah. threw them into this like wild crazy situation and there's no way people would come out of that without like study system to get up you know <laughs> yeah <laughs> 
Bruno is hidden with the great questions. <laughs> this question was, does your character's stats and personality change as you play because of the storyline? Ooh, that's a yeah. great question. <laughs> Definitely. Um, I've been trying to increase my strength score because I found out that Atreus can't pick up Mina. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah things definitely I will uh, not rest until I can pick up my wife <laughs> <laughs> uh, as you like defeat certain baddies and all of that you level up and with these leveling ups your stats increase or you buy certain things that make you stronger and whatnot or the DM gives you a gift <laughs> <laughs> have that going for you <laughs> Let me see. Here is a fun, like, yeah. So, yeah, your stats and everything change. Personalities can change. I mean, I feel like personalities don't necessarily change as much. Um, Except if you're a Atreus and you go from being a dark and broody to a cinnamon roll. <laughs> he's still dark and broody. He just less broody now. Well, yeah, because now he's in love. But like, he he's definitely been. He's still broody and dark, and it will still make choices that make you I mean, guys angry. I imagine his character arc is going to look a lot like Zuko from Avatar The Last Airbender. Just like, he's not working with anyone he has a personal vendetta against. So, yeah. like, the transition's a little softer, a little more nuanced than uh, he, Zuko's. He, z awesome. There's definitely a lot of Zuko inspiration in him. So, there was Zuko... Anakin is no these are all my childhood crushes. There was no way I wasn't gonna fall in love with Atreus. <laughs> <laughs> Doomed. A big part of it really depends on how much you put into your character. Are you living and breathing the story? Does this do you allow the story to change you? Or are you just absolutely determined that this is who I am, I will not change? Do you exist outside of your character anymore? <laughs> <laughs> we're not going to talk about that because I had a tabaxi paladin who I loved and yeah well that is one of the fun things is like like you you put so much of yourself in a character sometimes that like you really do get to express a lot which is fun because that's one of the another questions we have from Edgar Allan Broski on Instagram who is art I love and will always be obsessed with. It's a problem. Um, what's your favorite part of playing your character? And what do you get to express that you normal that you can't express normally? Cause sometimes you can express things in fictional characters. <laughs> ah yes. So William Wallop is saying, if we find any deck sounds on TikTok, to send them over to him. Nice. I love his portrayal of decks. It was fantastic. Oh, it's incredible. Incredible. Can't wait for yeah. an anchor to show up at some point. <laughs> she sent all your TikToks like, immediately <laughs> okay. and like, die over there constantly. So. Uh, <clears throat> let's see. I mean, there are so many things about a cure that I wish I could do. <laughs> like, that's how I look at it. Like, flying, awesome. Yeah. I mean, his, his sage wisdom is definitely something that I feel like to some degree I have, or at least try to have, but it's, it's much more focused and intentional with him, because, like, that's all you see, because that's all I let you see of him. Yeah. I feel like Mina's voice is very, like, loud and boisterous, and she's, like, very positive most of the time. Oh. Unless she's not. She feels everything very deeply. <laughs> um, but she's Sounds very, like someone I know. very patient, and I'm not as patient as her. She's Aww. very... She's not, she's very not easily shaken. And for me, I'm just like, I'm triggered. Goodbye. <laughs> I'll be back when I'm better. Um, <laughs> she like takes everything in stride. And I'm like, damn, I aspire. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I think with Atreus, one of my favorite things of playing him is just how like how hot and cold he can be. Like there are some things that he puts so much thought into, and then there are other things that like the things that trigger him, like all of his daddy issues. Um, that's when like he will do something that's reckless and stupid. And so it's it's fun trying to like it's 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 fun it's fun playing with that. And I also love all of his I love I love the way I have flavored his spells to make them like they're all the they're the standard cleric spells, but they're unique and it's just the this just by the the flavor that I've added to them and I really enjoy that. I think it's with him expressing things like you know, you can just exp- there you know, it, everyone has relationships in their past that have hurt them and like and the sometimes we've done things to try to like either forget the hurt or move past the hurt and Atreus is in a place where he can't really move past the hurt. So he is just living life like with bared teeth and white knuckles and expressing the angst of that has helped me get over a lot of some of the things that I haven't forgiven in my past. So it's like, it's nice to be able to like, he might not necessarily ever come to a healthy place of forgiveness, but I have. So you know what? Sorry, Atreus, that I have used you to uh, improve myself. But yeah, I just therapy myself with my characters. That's okay, because now he has Mina to therapize him, so it's I- fine. And it's, it's better to use a fake character than a real person. Right? Yeah. At least I'm not biting people's necks and killing them and getting claws. At least I haven't done that. <laughs> Um, I want to talk about something that uh, Peter wrote in the chat. So he said that he brought a Akir in thinking he was going to be a little more mysterious and silent. Um, so one of the big challenges of playing an edgelord, as many of us always want to do, um, you know, you look at Batman and you're like, oh, he's silent and he's... But he also does talk a lot. So the problem with playing that silent type in a party and in D&D is you get left out. Um, and you, you can come in and you can still be quiet. You can still have that, you know, stone solid persona and keep your character's walls up. But if you're not going to role play, if you're not going to talk at the table, you're not going to have fun. So as much as you want to play that rogue who has no charisma (laughs) and just, you know, a thief in the night stabs somebody and ducks back into the darkness... All you're ever going to do is roll dice, and while everyone else is smiling and laughing and telling jokes and building these relationships, you end up isolating yourself. So that's one of my, you know, excitements of watching Peter um, just explode with a cure. He, he's come into it. He puts on the mask. Like you see it, you you, you feel it. Um, and then as a DM, that's that's beautiful. Hey, there's the mask. We love that. <laughs> Like Peter makes a cure drop these like wisdom bombs on people and then walk away and you're just like shit. <laughs> I'm like that was in my husband. Interesting. <laughs> Damn. Like I said, it's it's in there. It's just it's there. I intentionally make sure it's the only thing you see from a cure. But then <laughs> that a super charismatic, mysterious, still kind of quiet type occasional rogue with Tara. <laughs> Who's like, in the background, in the background, poof, says something really funny, poof. And you're just like... Something funny and potentially sultry or seductive. We seductive can't quite Or know. like a little bit insulting, you're just like, what? what? <laughs> Am I supposed to be flattered or threatened? I don't know. Was that a compliment? <laughs> there is a lot more extroverted, I think, than I am in real life. So <laughs> I got a mouth on her. to be like boisterous and like borderline party girl, flirt, all that kind of stuff. But then she's got 
certain quiet, mysterious things about her. And she's always joking and sarcastic, but then all of a sudden, 101 with like Atreya, she just has these moments of like depth that everyone's kind of like, what? Where did that come from? <laughs> that was dark. <laughs> that was like either heavy or like surprisingly touching. <laughs> Oh. Which I think is why Atreus and, and Tara have like a sibling relationship yeah. because like they've been very real with each other in their moments one on one and then the moment that you put the two of them back together with the party, they're like throwing shit at each other all the time. They're both children of trauma. Oh, yeah. yeah. They're trauma babies. Trauma babies. I mean they all got trauma, guys. <laughs> they've all got trauma, just very different traumas. <laughs> Look, there is nothing wrong with honey. She is perfect and what you think. That bitch. So, we ready for another- Nina may or may not have to kill honey at some point. I mean, <laughs> awesome. we, we, we had an editor go through and read our the book so far, and one of the comments was specifically about honey and how much she loved the character. And I was like, <laughs> He's a compelling character, you know? <laughs> I'm committed to hating him. <laughs> I love it. Sticking Mina to hates him. Sticking hater. I, so we have another question. Do you and the crew have any, um, any techniques for getting into character? Hair flip. <laughs> Does alcohol count? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. I I can't do NPC voices. I really do try. Um, I make the best of what I can do. So having the little accessories, um, you know, it helps me to remember at least their personality. If I can't really do a voice for that specific character, um, so it's silly, but it helps me remember what their flaws, their goals, and that sort of thing. Is. Yeah, I do. I do similar things with costuming because I I have a an acting background and I loved I, I love when you you know you put all this work into writing or not writing but doing a character like I, I just I loved when then you could um finally step into the costume. So for I think like almost all of my characters, since they're all clerics, they all have a holy symbol. So I've made their um their like the, these pendants for a holy symbol for them to wear. I don't have I haven't made a traces yet because I made his holy symbol too complicated, but I have worn like a necklace that I wear and like it's so funny because like I'll, I, I try to then sit like a trace, which is hard when you're pregnant to sit like a man. And I mean, I have an opera background. Do you know how many times I've played a man? I can move like a man. I know how to do this. And now I'm trying to sit like a man with a pregnant belly and it's very difficult. Just like, oh, I'm like, so I'm trying, so I sit, I try to like, sit like him, move like him, just do random gestures that I know he would do. Um, so like if I'm like playing with my necklace, if I'm pulling at that, that's because like that's what he would be doing in the situation. Um, and I tend to wear my hair as similarly to his as possible. It's, yeah. So just for each game, that's how I get myself into character. <laughs> made a point of making a long headed red like long hair redhead so that I don't have to go that far. <laughs> He's got long hair, so if I just yeah. pull it like yeah, this is my this is my got that low manly long hair thing like Will Turner, you yeah. know. But like you know. the first time I cosplayed me now I was like, okay. Now I got it. Now I feel it. But like for the games, like the first time being a first time player was super weird, you know? Because you're just like, suspension of disbelief. Suspension, I am this character, it's like acting, but it's also make pretend, it's kind of strange. So you're just like, I let everyone go first, and I was like, okay, uh, here I am. <laughs> and then like, but for her, she's like very strong, but also she's like very feminine. So like leaning into like the hair play, and like, you know, she's more, she's gonna be sitting, she's gonna be more like dainty sometimes. Kind of give people the wrong impression of her, which I love. But yeah. Yeah. I love that. Um... I feel like most of most of the characters I've played have been at least somewhat similar in demeanor. And 
So I, I feel like there's not really anything that I do to get into character. I just like think of a specific part of their backstory, or like, you know, I want I want to approach this from a certain perspective or something, and then just do that. But yeah, it's not really anything specific there. What about Tara? I feel like I've watched you enough to know when your terror comes out. It kind of like, she like leans back and she's like, <laughs> she puts a she puts a face on. She goes with the, like the bro vibe sometimes, and then she's like, yeah. <laughs> your whole body language changes for Tara. It's pretty funny. <laughs> okay, I guess it's true. <laughs> You're just like, I don't know. I don't do anything. We're just like, <laughs> we watch. <laughs> about it because it's like when you become a character you just kind of start doing stuff so yeah I mean even with wearing the hats like she kind of just pulls it down leans back so I think about her and how she was raised like very feminine elf like she's a noble and the whole difference is like sitting I mean, she re rebels against the proper. I know. Yeah. She wears like masculine dress and all that kind of stuff. So it's. Which is like the irony between Mina and Tara is they were raised very, very similar, but went very different directions with it. Very different directions. <laughs> that is the fun thing about them. Yeah. For sure. And it's, and it's really funny how you guys have similar backstories, but very divergent presence. Yeah. Like. Just because your backstory is something that is, you know, similar to another backstory you may have read or seen or done something or even similar to in the parties, it doesn't mean you're going to end up on the same, as the same person, which is, which is pretty fun. Yeah. The irony also is that like we, all of us wrote our stories without telling each other what these stories were. Well, yeah. So like, as soon as they like popped up, we're just like, oh, there's some similarities. <laughs> Their variants, said Bruno. <laughs> <laughs> True. <laughs> so yeah, they're all very strong and seafaring. Like they're the strongest in the party. I mean, yeah. <laughs> they are. They're they really flirtatious, but very differently. Yeah. Very differently. Yeah. I'm pretty sure Tara ever like like crossed the line and flirted with Atreus, which she wouldn't. <laughs> Like, <laughs> we're gonna duke it you out. Know, you're down, it would be very ugly. You like tap, tap. All right, we're good. No, no, no. A tear would take her down. That would be the thing. No one would see it coming because all he does is frown about this uh, Mintreus <laughs> ship. But then you step in, in, just know you need to know your place. <laughs> With lightning arrows, this this is a good question for Akira. Are uh, what's your go-to spell? You're a magic user. My go-to spell. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, the one I'm always tempted to use is guiding bolt, because, mm -hmm. I mean, to be fair, the first the first <laughs> time I used it and it actually hit, I did crit and destroyed the enemy in one hit. Um, <laughs> So that kind of makes it my favorite from the get-go. Uh, I would say I probably use Produce Flame the most, though, because it's more convenient to just kind of use in, in different ways. Um, Magic Missile. No, there's lots, of, <laughs> there's lots of good spells out there, though. Yeah. Magic Missile's fun. I, my go-to spell is um, Spiritual Weapon. <laughs> so Robert has played with me enough and any any friends who might still from my uh from our Sunday games with real life people who might be in there in the chat still know that a uh, spiritual weapon and then um sacred flame is like the go-to thing that I do. Like it's it's just what I, it's like oh yeah so I'll be a spiritual weapon and then sacred flame. And I got very comfortable with that being my safe move. And um, 
No, I'm, I'm, I'm finally at a comfortable place where I'm doing different things. I did vampiric touch the other day. It was great. <laughs> I was just shocked that it wasn't one of the usuals. I know, that impressed. was his face. Wrong, because he goes like, oh, okay. And I was like, wait, am I using this spell correctly? Am I doing the right thing? Like, I get all nervous. And it's like, no, that was just better than, you know, your normal rinse and repeat. So, yeah. I need, I have favorite spells, but I need to avoid my favorites. Because I need to do something no, 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 more no. interesting. You have a signature spell. Okay, I have a signature. And then, and then you mix yeah. it up with the rest. You can add to them. <laughs> Diversity is good. Uh, <laughs> I specifically played a fighter, so I didn't have to learn any spells. <laughs> it's a solid first, uh, solid first character move. And she's a tank, so I feel like I aced it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Do you have spells, Lisa? Or I mean, you you're just you're just, you have misty stats. Yes. Well, I have misty stats, so I wouldn't say. Are we same for our character or for just like in general? Oh, well, for, 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 for these particular characters, but if you have a favorite spell, I want to know. Like, yeah, does Lisa herself have spells? <laughs> does Lisa have spells? I'm sorry, what? Yes, I do. <laughs> I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> but, yeah, no. So, in a rogue, I do have Misty Step, and that's always a fun one, because then you can just appear right behind a character and just have a step. <laughs> Take attack. Look back. It's a good move. It's a really good move. Especially when you're falling out of the sky. That was really cool. That was pretty fun. Guys, that was yeah. badass. <laughs> that whole sequence was badass. <laughs> was that before we were live streaming? Is that on the YouTube? That's on YouTube. That's on, yeah, that's on the YouTube. We do have a YouTube channel. <laughs> <laughs> we don't advertise it as much, but it's there. What it say? Do you want to ask Janine your question that you had had? <laughs> oh, I mean, part of that was just me bullying her offline. But <laughs> it was me. I'll, I'll bring it up. Um, what do you and Mina uh, fear more, losing Atreus to death or losing him to vampirism? I feel like the answer is pretty obvious because if death means he's gone for good, then I'm not cool with that. But if he could come back, then great. But if he's a vampire and he can still be a good vampire, then that's cool too. <laughs> no, he's not good if he's a vampire anymore. I don't know that. <laughs> I know that. <laughs> that's why she has calluses on her neck. He goes bad and she just keeps sticking it out. Hey. Oh, from the dream? <laughs> <laughs> he has not bitten her yet. She's been bitten by a lizard guy. Yeah. It's true. <laughs> Are the calluses from that guy? <laughs> oh my goodness. No, I don't want to lose the character. So that's pretty much it. <laughs> yeah. We have some more Inanimous questions that I got. Uh, what's been your favorite encounter so far? Hmm. I'm trying to think Thumbling. now. Actually, yeah. This is really random, but I actually really like the boat chase scene. <laughs> <laughs> I hated that one. I, <laughs> I did it so poorly. I rolled so well. And it's like, it was like my Jack Sparrow moment where I'm like <laughs> drinking rum, steering the ship through like all this. It's a moment where like, so Tara, how do you make a, a ship fly? <laughs> <laughs> But I'm trying to remember how you set it up, Robert, where we had to roll for the next person. So whatever we rolled, it affected Man. them. So I kept rolling, and Mina kept getting absolutely screwed, like losing her shoes. <laughs> so salty. and so. But like the fun thing is that I took that saltiness and I carried it into the next scene. So yeah. yeah. Honestly, that was one of my favorites, just because it was so random and fun. <laughs> so poorly. And it, it was a lot of fun roleplay based off of our roles. So I really enjoyed yeah. that. But anyways. The dice and the acting were working really well that night. It was really fun. Yeah. yeah. 
Oh, I, hmm. I love the Sandalay fight because I really did love that Akir just came in and was like, <laughs> screw you. So, so I, I do need to um, expand a little bit on what, what happened there, at least according to Akir. Nobody saw it because Akir was technically standing like in the back. Um, <laughs> but I envision Akir saw during that fight was, for, for those of you who don't know his backstory yet, Akir um, came from the airplane. Uh, he was cast out by a, a dragon yeah. attack. And not an airplane, the airplane. So basically like heaven equivalent, sort of. Uh, but he was then adopted by a band of fighters who then were tricked by an evil wizard to fight a dragon, and they lost. Uh, so he hates evil wizards with a burning, fiery <laughs> passion. Um, also, in my mind, so does the goddess of the Arakrokra, because the dragon that attacked them was spurred on by the same evil wizard that tricked them to fight the dragon with his band of friends. Um, so they have the same enemy in that regard. Mm -hmm. So when Akir heard Sambale talking, and after Mina said, do we need him alive? And everyone said no. Like, Akir just saw red. And then, like, he made a short prayer to his goddess, and she appears in a spectral form behind him and just, like, swooshes through his body and out his arm, and she is the guiding bolt that just obliterates Sambale. So nice. that is what happened. It's canon now. So editor who likes to enhance scenes, that's your homework. Great. I gotta keep moving. Now you forward. just have to figure out how to work that in from a perspective of no one saw it happen. Except for Sambalay. Sambalay saw all of it. I mean somebody <laughs> could have turned their head. I could have turned my head. Well I, I what the what? <laughs> <laughs> when were there two of them? I will say that cave scene was also my favorite encounter because I got to say, do you like barbecue and throw an alchemist fire bomb into the cave? <laughs> but also, that was the first time Atreus died. And so it became a very, very emotional moment. Yeah. Which led to some awesome dialogue. And I, I, was, I was down to my death saving throws. That was not fun. <laughs> Yeah, but it's such a good moment in like the book. I like one of the strongest moments I think that played out. So I'm yeah, that. <laughs> I didn't think of what my favorite encounter was. I so I love making Scooby Doo plans. Scooby -Doo! <laughs> I truly, truly, truly love making these ridiculous plans that might work if everything goes well and every single per part of the yeah. plan and this could the the so the this the original scooby-doo plan which is why now nobody will let atreus plan things anymore because it was a rough plan was like you know we were trying to get into this door that we knew had undead things inside we just didn't know what and so i was like yeah let's build a barricade around the door um in like a u shape so that we can be behind and shoot them and i using my spider climb ability will climb up onto the wall and ceiling you know open up the door they'll all come out at us and we just we just get them from behind our uh from behind our um our barricade and we sang Les Mis about it. And then, um, <laughs> then we decided to make it even worse. It's like, why don't we take some of the mattresses that were in this room and put them in front of the door and put oil on them so that we can light it on fire also. And, and if they get through the fire, then we can start shooting them. And then we went in. That part was my idea. Don't, don't forget the prisoners. Don't forget oh, the yeah. We had, we, had, we had press ganged these prisoners into helping us, right? And they're like, um, because you're going to kill us otherwise? We're like, yeah, we'll kill you otherwise. So, you know. We put so they're like, okay, hands. fine. <laughs> yeah, so we we, so the, we had press ganged like five or six prisoners into helping us. And then just to add one more step to the layer of Scooby-Doo plan, we took all these ball bearings that Tara had and we 
scattered them in between the barricades and the mattresses, right? This should have been a great plan because then we've got all of us with some ranged weapons, ranged spells. We've got crossbows in the hands of the prisoners. It's going to work great. And the fucking undead did not come out of the room. I'll have you know, Atreus also wanted to light the mattresses on fire. And Akira said, how about not? <laughs> yeah. That was so, the beginning of Akira going, I don't trust this kid. <laughs> so, to be fair, the, boy. the undead would have chased them mm -hmm. if they all hadn't just said, oh, they didn't immediately rush out and then jump into the room. The yeah. undead had to stand up from prone and walk to the door and were never given the even move before everyone entered the room. Um, and then all of the captors, our good goodish aligned party, went into the room and left a whole bunch of bandits who were under the threat of death by themselves, armed, and without any sort of um, supervision. So they ran away. That's um, what does. In Akira's defense, Atreus broke the plan. Atreus told the party he would stay on the wall. Atreus told Akira he would stay on the wall, and then Atreus jumped down. And so Akira's like, hell no. But I couldn't see what was happening. I needed to see what was in the room and assess the threat. I... <laughs> So what we want to is a classic lack of communication. We all just hey, met at that point, okay? We were incredibly new and green to the situation, mostly just pretty. And Akira, not so long ago, lost his party fighting some unknown foe. So, like, he wasn't letting that happen. Is that the real reason why Akira just hates Atreus? Because <laughs> he's prone to die. Like you I mean, if you've read if you've read the short backstory I made, he also from the bat does not trust Atreus. Yeah. He likes Mina. And he's not sure why. But like he's very suspicious of Atreus. Just I don't know. You give off a dead vibe or something. Yeah, well obviously he gives off a dead vibe. <laughs> Yes, the uh, the incident with the alchemist did not help. No, I Atreus has tried so hard though to like win Akir's favor so that they can have a cohesive group, and it's just not worked every single time. So at this point, he's just like, I've given up. This guy hates me, and okay. But, but you know he's <laughs> okay. We can have we can yeah. have a mutual relationship. Formed around protecting Nina, who doesn't need our protection. Yeah, no. <laughs> it's literally Sokka and Zuko, though, because, like, you know, Sokka and Zuko never, like, they get along. They went to the prison together. Like, they, they did all the never things. Never really friends. But afterwards, it wasn't like, yeah, we're best buds. It was just, that's rough, buddy. <laughs> so what you're saying is Mina is the avatar? Mina's the avatar! <laughs> with no magic. <laughs> Magic's unnecessary. That's why she has all the NPCs. She collects them. She, she acquires the magic. Yeah. If, so if your characters were in today's... I think Mina wears yellow! She's the avatar! <laughs> if your characters were in today's modern world, what would they be doing, and or where would they be? Ooh. Uh huh. That's a good question. <laughs> Are you the <laughs> No. Are you in politics? I feel like so you know we'd be running a like um, CrossFit gym. <laughs> it would be her gym. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, I support this. Get his muscle. Yeah. <laughs> one of those neon yellow signs yeah 
Atreus, it would be that hipster that um, doesn't go to like any, doesn't go to Starbucks or Dunkin' Donuts. Like he only drinks an ungodly amount of very specifically brewed black coffee from like the most and Nina and Atreus meet at a cafe. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. Wait, I want this AU. <laughs> well, we're writing the story. <laughs> he sits there, like, he, writing really bad poetry. Like, he just sits there writing really angsty poetry. He's probably in a band um, that doesn't play anywhere. They, like, <laughs> it's, it's his, um, and the band is obviously called The Order. Um, and they meet in, like, the, 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 uh, drummer's mom's basement. None of them actually live at the house. Like, they just... Chinese house. It's really bad. He's, he's a hipster emo boy. <laughs> I'm, I'm having a lot of trouble picturing a cure in the, the modern day. The bird. Probably like a <laughs> Here sits in Central Park waiting for people to have the uh, Let's see. What would that's I feel that's like fair. He, he would go to, he would probably show up at a very popular like city or something and just kind of sit in the restaurants and bars and just like people watch. He finds people fascinating. Everyone thinks he probably has a food blog. But they don't know. It's not confirmed. <laughs> but no. It's just suspected to, and no one can find it. He's looking for the best tea, and okay. that's wrangled with you two. Exactly. We all meet a cafe! <gasps> so, what does Tarek right, look I'm like? buying in. Because Tarek, is she now a captain of a plane? <laughs> no. <laughs> See, I see right. that as, like, follow me away kind of account, where she does Travel around the world and like photographs her adventures. She's an influencer. She's an influencer, and she also does like humanitarian aid. Yeah, yeah, definitely an activist for sure. <laughs> an activist influencer. I like that. Nice. Yeah. Try Max's question over there because my my Twitch chat was not loading, so I'm just looking at all of Robert's. What would your character's karaoke life soundtrack song be? This is a good one for Janine here because she makes playlists. So. Oh, I have a whole Ventreus playlist. I think a Trace's song is going to be halfway there. It is not. <laughs> Shut up. I have an Atreus playlist. Um, a specific Atreus playlist outside of the Ventreus playlist? I do. <laughs> Did I ever send it to you? I don't no! Know. Oh! Is it just Joey Beatty all the way? It is not! Jo okay. Here's okay. Okay. I have an obsession and a problem where The Amazing Devil is the best band ever, and you must, everyone must listen to it. If anyone doesn't know, that's, um, Gas Gear. Yeah. The, uh, from The Witcher. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He has his own band. <laughs> Incredible. His band is the best thing to ever bless our world. Just, oh, why don't you, wait. Why don't you describe it and then send it to her after the stream? No, I, I will. I'm just sending her the, the, the playlist really fast. So okay. I, I like decide which one would be like his theme song. Um, I scare myself. No, that's, that's a Mentreus song specifically. Yeah, to both of them, yeah. Yeah, but I did put it in the Atreus playlist. Yeah, I know that one's there. The, um, hmm. Blossoms by the Amazing Devil is probably one of them, um, and uh, yeah, I think Arsonist Lullaby by Hosier. So, <sighs> yeah, those. But if he was good to do um, karaoke, it would probably be uh, Creature by. Um, what is that? Is it half alive? Is it the yeah, I creation blessed and holy, made in glory? That one. It would be bad. 
canon to Trist is not the same. <laughs> or dance, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> no. Hey, Lisa, can we get a preview of what you're working on? Ooh. Nice. Scales. So, I have a whole, like, dragon male shirt, basically, that I'm doing. So, I'm doing, like, gradient in different sizes. So, this is part of the size. So, <laughs> for those of you who don't know, she is our resident armorer. I think at this point we all have like several pieces that Lisa has made for us. She makes leather work, chain mail, headdresses, like um, the like the leather tiaras. She's made the cure mask. This is this is Lisa, the forest shade. Oh, we should have been in our little backdrop. Yeah. You want me to put it up? I can put it up. Ah, oh, sorry. It'll be okay. I mean, we've only got five windows instead of, we've only got four windows instead of five like normal, so it wouldn't line up the right way. No. Yeah. Da, da, da. I had, try and see. Was there one more? I think there was one more on the Google Doc. That Janine, did you send me this one? What? Did you send me a question? <laughs> what? Yeah, you put a little yellow heart, and I'm like, hi, Janine. <laughs> Always. Um, yes, hi, yes. Is Atreus's god actually real, or is he just some Wizard of Oz a-hole? It's the second one. <laughs> I still contest that my theory is correct, in that Presidium is completely in Atreus's mind and does not exist. Atreus lost a lot of blood that day. Hallucinating. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, no, that was 100% me being, being an a-hole myself. <laughs> Atreus, Atreus is convinced that Eusidium is an actual god. He's an actual god, right? Absolutely. Yes. He certainly believes it. <laughs> there's, there's a whole, like, would there be an order after him if he wasn't? Has anyone else heard of the order? Or yes. What is the order called? NPCs? No, other than the NPCs. The order of the stronghold. Hmm. Hmm. But stronghold no, or the stronghold. Stronghold. <laughs> I mean the stronghold on the people who live there because it's all fake. The only god that like um, Mina mentions is Poseidon and I, she just says it as like a you know, flip it. <laughs> A swear word. A respect for the sea. Right. Well, so let me there. let me ask this: Would you would you describe your order of the stronghold as maybe a little like cult like? You can't ask a cult member if they think they're in a cult. <laughs> no, it doesn't seem cult like. We all just get together and wear a very specific uniform and do very specific worship practices and then are given a specific mission to go out into the world and spread our mission by killing undead things. So, you know, <laughs> you can't just join this religion. You have to be chosen specifically by God. So, you know, it's... I mean, there. I do have, like, a plan in my head that if there's ever words between Mina and this god that um, she uh, was like, does anyone in your order actually love you or do you just corner them to do your things? <laughs> it's, it's true because, I mean, everyone in the order is like, uh, it, 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 they're chosen when they're like on the brink of death. Hmm. So, yeah. <laughs> That's not love. Mm -mm. Also, he can't be a warlock in disguise because he doesn't have the uh, charisma. He doesn't have the charisma. I have... It just means you can't multi-class. Okay. And yeah, it's basically the military. He's... he's... For undead murder. For, for undead murdering. Yeah. yeah. It's, the, it's the military for if instead of loving your country, you want to go kill vampires. So let's, it's like let's chill yeah. on the stabby words before before Twitch turns off our feet. <laughs> it's hard when you're talk 
when you're playing D and D because that's another thing I, I describe all of my my you know just for us actually not that, but you know I'm just like yeah. Vampires are very sexy, and that is 100% the reason I'm playing Atreus. And I will never play a goblin or something else because um, I just, if I, what's the point of playing if I can't be beautiful? And, and, I almost yeah. played a mouse folk Wolf character. Party is super beautiful. Not a super <laughs> intelligent, but so beautiful. We're so hot. So hot. <laughs> Especially when we like KO certain characters and the way they're done and described, you're just like, wow, that was hot as hell. <laughs> I, I, I aggressively describe my, my takedown shots. He asks, how do you want to do this? And I love writing, so there is not going to be a moment where I go, I get him. Uh, he, he falls and down. When he asks, what healing words did you say? Stop bleeding. <laughs> Okay, okay. So, yeah, I couldn't think of a poetry way. man says stop bleeding. <laughs> okay, I couldn't think of a, what would you like okay, Janine, what would you use Please. healing word? So, so Akir's Akir's healing word is oh, not is today. Not. So, not today. That's great. Not today. Uh, they all get British when they do healing word. <laughs> <laughs> Does that no, I have, a, I have a constant British accent for Atreus. It's just constantly there. It is as best as I can do for a man voice, and it is not great. So, <laughs> I believe it every time. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> Very invested. So, <laughs> I love doing voices, but there are just I just I always feel like so awkward doing Atreus's because I'm like I don't necessarily sound manly but i want him to sound manly so i just you know mm -hmm. and i <laughs> i can i can i can play a 13 year old boy i've got i used to have that on my voiceover reel um <laughs> this wolfie in here with the compliments but since it's a fantasy world the idea is to be the thing you are not so shouldn't you all be playing ugly characters <laughs> shut up stop, stop. <laughs> kidding don't stop <laughs> Carry on. <laughs> Tell me more. <laughs> Atreus doesn't get the hair flip, so. Uh, yeah, I, get I don't really have that much of a specific voice for Mina. It's all about the hair. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's ever so slightly more suave, but not that much. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I feel like I don't have a voice for Akir, but he does have a specific tone or like attitude that he speaks with. It's a little <laughs> condescending at times. Yeah, it's like a little bit of an accent, but not quite. It's just, it really is tone. Yeah. <laughs> so, so maybe later, y'all, it's eagles are taking over the whole screen now. <laughs> you came to our stream, so. This is why I do and complimented them. Constantly bring them down. Because if you let them go, they're all going to run the world. It's just, yeah. But we're cute. I know. So you can let us run the world. It's true. You're proud of us. Don't lie. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Are, we, are we your favorite game? Obviously. Ha, take that, Max. <laughs> <laughs> we're not really just kidding. <laughs> You're my favorite game, too, because you're the only game I've ever played. I'm also not allowing more room in my heart for other games, so. <laughs> I, yeah, I, I was playing a bunch of games, um, but I have, I have realized that um, my brain capacity is not great whilst pregnant, and so I've ended up dropping a lot of games. I might be doing a one-shot with um some tiktok pals but i am just but it's a one shot so i'm not feeling like i have to track with the game because i was i was what was i in like seven games at one point yeah, it was impressive it was so hot <laughs> no, just Too like... much. that's what i do, but i know it's what you do but i'm pregnant 
This game is my whole life, my only life, so we're just going to keep it that way. I don't have room to be obsessed with more things. I need to focus. <laughs> Especially since I need to finish writing the first book. I know. <laughs> gonna stay here. I'm I'm loving writing the book. Like it's so great. It's great. I, I hadn't I so like I haven't written in so long because like I just burn out so easily. So the fact that like we're both doing it together like works so well because I'm like I don't burn out meant to be written not by one person <laughs> <laughs> thank you for putting up with all of my very excessive descriptive paragraphs <laughs> like I, I'm like putting down the bones of it and I'm like move as fast as possible get as much down as possible or worry about filling in the gaps later so it, it works it really does work I'm currently at the boat scene right now which I'm just like I it's just pure action sequence and I'm just like oh the chain uh, the chain yeah, I so know. That's my goal for this weekend is to get through that action sequence so that I can get back to the dialogue, which is nice because we do have most of the dialogue written out on Discord. It's very helpful. However, the tenses are all fucked up, so I have to fix all of them as we go and fill in like certain details and stuff. So it's fine, but it's a very unique way. I don't think people write books like this. Yeah, it's definitely. Definitely a unique way to, to write a book. So. Usually you don't have five people collaborating and, you know, the author has all the characters and all their motives. Yeah. No one Collaborating can... or messing up the story? Yeah, it's like you, I don't, I only make choices for one fourth of the group. So. Yep. Which is what I've been doing now that, like, as I'm going back and editing some like, and I'm editing, like, character dialogue and stuff, like, I'm adding more dialogue between characters to flesh it out more, to try to, like, I'm spacing dialogue differently than how we might have said it, like, in big chunks, so that it's got more of a natural organic feel, and it definitely allows you to understand all of the characters as you are reading. It's it's definitely harder than I thought to... It's also really hard to do a dialogue between four people. Because if you have two, you can bounce back and forth and you don't technically need to say who's saying what or doing what. But if you have four, you always need to say who's saying it. But you mm -hmm. can't say, Tara said, and then Akir said, and then Atreus said. It has to be, he commented, she did this while she said it. And like, so that you have like a movement in the whole room. And I'm like, I don't know how else to say said. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey Siri, how else do you say smirk? Hi. How else do you say gaze? Right? I know. What else can you do with your eyes? <laughs> yeah. So that's challenging. But it's been it's been so it's been fun. I didn't you know, I've read a couple um campaigns that were that people were trying to like novelize their campaigns and I didn't realize like how hard it would be to do because you don't necessarily want it to read like you're rolling, you know? So you want it to read naturally where you can see an arc of a story instead of just like, ah, this is probably where somebody, you know, rolled in that one. Like, so, so it's, so, you know, you have to find, real reasons for why someone all of a sudden like was really confident in this and then went uh no like you have to it, it's hard but it's really worthwhile to do i mean some of some of that also comes from rob too like his his descriptions during the game of what happens after a role i i see a lot in some of the details especially around fight scenes because i know janine struggles a lot with more action-packed scenes like mm -hmm. taking you know, this person did this, then this person did this, then this person did this, and combining it into like that all happened at the same mm -hmm. in the same six second period. All of that just happened. And then like yes, it's good. it's easier for me that I'm pulling it from one perspective, but that's also hard. Because if somebody does something behind my back, there's chances I'm not gonna see the action, I'm gonna see the result. So right. I have to describe like 
All of a sudden, this dude went down. Why? Because Tara's psychic blade from behind me. <laughs> yeah. So it's like also like putting myself into like where it is, and so like the mapping of the game comes into play. So it's like helpful that we have the live stream and the recording that can like go back and like kind of see it. But yeah, it, it's it's not easy. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, you, you had three actions. Tara did three actions, but like maybe something else is happening in between the two actions, and yeah. And that's the thing about combat. You don't need to know every swing and a miss. You know, I can, like, Mina had that beautiful solo combat where, you know, 30 seconds long of gladiator level fighting. It was. Bad. Um, it was. But we don't need to, you know, we don't need to describe the seven misses between <laughs> the two, the two of you. Like, you know, um, that's all given in the give and take and the flow. And for like, the trace is pulled underwater. Nobody knows what happened. Exactly. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> just like bubbles. No You're just like I, you just get to see bubbles and um, blood all of a sudden in the water where you go. Which one dying? <laughs> I <laughs> know. Yeah, uh, I'm really excited to write that one. That's gonna be a long time from now, but I feel like those went really well. And I also love like how some of the conversations they happen, and then like the dice play them out so well later. Like the Mina and Tara have that whole conversation about why she hates fish and what happened on, with the Leviathan. And then the next thing that Tara does is have to go grab a fish and like freaking nails it. <laughs> I overcome my fear. It's <laughs> amazing. Like, like naturally, Mina's gonna tackle hug her because she knows how much it meant to her. <laughs> it was such a great moment. Oh, that played out really well. I, I say that's probably one of my other favorite parts of DMing is setting up these moments where you have triumph. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's good stuff. <laughs> yeah. We've been on here for two hours. Our team, like, our group, this role play, like, the conversations really well. It's true. Yeah. yeah. So, speaking of that, I mean, we probably don't have a lot of people who still have tons of questions, but that was a huge part of where we started. You know, as the DM, I asked all of you, what do you want out of this? What do you like about this idea? So knowing that, you know, we weren't looking to make a combat-oriented video game called D&D, &D, and that storytelling and interpersonal roleplay was interesting to all of you, that helped me craft and, you know, weave that story. Yeah. And so, you know, there's the reason we have the quest board. It's not for you guys to get loot. It's to help you prioritize. So um, that's one of the things that I've done is I identify... It's a little bit of metagaming, but I identify the main quest, the side quests, and the personal quests for the players so that, you know, everyone's on the same page. Like, this is what we need to be doing, and if we can accomplish all these things, great. But it keeps everyone on the same railroad. Yeah. Um, but there's plenty of stops along the way for people to get off the tracks. <laughs> Railroading your players is okay if you do it in a way that's not being a jerk. <laughs> it's called letting the you drive the train. Yeah. On on the tracks I put out. So. The crazy train. It's crazy. It's the chaos. Crazy train. That's yeah. gonna be our new theme song. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Ozzy. else? Any other questions? I think it's just uh, us and a couple people still here. No. <laughs> Max, you all ready for rugby? Oh, you're not going to be around tomorrow, are you? He's got a game. Ooh. Right, so I think we talked about um, potentially setting up our Patreon at like a $3 level to get to the Discord. And then, and I also want to set up a Ko-Fi so that if people can't do Patreon, they can do, like, one-time gifts. So. Yeah. What class is Dex? He's a barbarian, right? Obviously. Obviously. Yeah. Barbarian. 
Mm-hmm. For sure. And I'm trying to keep him alive. <laughs> uh, our Barb. I, I do love him. I don't want him to die. But I also don't want to use diamonds to save him. Okay, I can send a whisper to him. Does that mean you can whisper? Look at that. Yeah. That's cool. That's cool. So. You whispering over there. Secret, secret I probably shouldn't be looking at. You. But I am the wife of the DM. Close so your I, eyes. <laughs> I'm the wife of the DM. I try to get to know all the secrets, but I don't get it. But there are secrets that you don't know. There are secrets I don't know. He won't tell me. <laughs> and then it makes me very nervous. Like, he tortured me for, like, three days about um, Atreus's dream nightmare and then getting claws. So. Yeah. It's fine. You're welcome. <laughs> overcame that obstacle it's fine yeah <laughs> we work with it it's fine. <sighs> i mean that went much better than expecting guys <laughs> you all showed up and that was awesome so thank you guys for all showing up and asking you'll us. have to do this Something like this at least two more times this month. We really want to get to that next level because I feel like we're almost there anyway. So might as well try. Why we can do it. Being a toy. Maybe maybe we should do like if people would be interested um, in like doing any reading from like the first couple of chapters. We could do like a live reading of the first couple of chapters of the book just to try to. Just so I that people can not volunteer to read. <clears throat> I will read. <laughs> Are we reading in character? It's prime. We could we character. Can table read. That is totally fine. Yeah. We can do some table reading. Does that mean I have to do all the start doing, start doing auditions for the narrator of the story? Great. <laughs> I volunteer anyone out there. <laughs> Where, yeah. So we could like do something like that. And people can catch up kind of in that way too. So, yeah, yeah. we've got to find a way to get our um, YouTube out there more effectively because it's got all the older ones. It's public Not- now. It wasn't really before it was unlisted, but now it's public. So you should be able oh, to search Rules of Redemption and find it. I tried I, to find it the other It's day. not necessarily all of the... Um, it's not all yeah. of the... Stuff. I we, only started- we only started recording... After Sambalay? I don't think we recorded Sambalay. Yeah, I don't think so. Uh, Rose of Redemption is one word on YouTube. No oh, okay. Got it? Rose of Redemption, one word. And there are, let's see, how many videos on there right now? One, two, three, four, five. So you get the, you get to start at the chase scene, basically. <laughs> Yes. I feel like there's there, more. We don't. We're missing the council one here. Maybe so we're... I. There's thirteen videos. Council, council's on there. There's thirteen videos. It was just showing me five. There are thirteen videos on there. So we started from delivering the ale. So after we left the haunted house. Oh, so the the well the first thing we recorded was honey. Yes. <laughs> nice. Yes. So the better, yeah. there you go. YouTube has the backlog. Okay. Great. You so, can click. Will, will Twitch have a problem if I post a link to YouTube? Uh, doubt it. No idea. Okay. Well, then I will post a link to the public playlist, which has all of the videos so far, uh, except for the most recent. I haven't uploaded that yet. I'm working on it. Oh, yeah. That one has oh. our epic one-on-one by battles, so. <laughs> Dex, I know I'll be watching. I'll just come. I'm obviously going to just call you Dex for the rest of your life now, so. <laughs> one thing you'll notice also, is the large majority of the, the large majority of them are 
just like this, or just us on Discord. But the most recent ones, we have a new overlay that some of you have seen. Just from our origins, where we didn't know what we were doing. We've only just started getting fancy. We have humble origins. <laughs> it, but it's because of all of the people. They wanted to see it. They wanted us to start streaming. Yeah. So this is all by personal request. <laughs> It's been, yeah, thank you for everyone for their, your support. It's been awesome to see this actually Bro. take off yeah. as something yeah, cool. It's, it's wild. It's really wild. Who knew? It's been awesome. We'll see. We'll see where we end up, you know? Uh, that'll be good. Okay. I, I, Friends. Yeah. I'm calling it. <laughs> it's time for us to call it a night. We we have no lives. Apparently, we spend our Friday nights with you all. And that's okay. We don't mind. <laughs> Good night this way. Yeah. I'm going to go eat some Oreos. Thank you all. For, a snack time. <laughs> thank you all for joining us. And I am signing off with our DM. So. Night. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye, thank you.